Hello, this is Brendan, and in this episode I'm going to uh, have a look at drawing girls or the uh, female anatomy. I'm not quite sure what I'll title this yet, but I have this uh, GIMP file here, this canvas I was working on, and you see the girl has, uh, you know, standard eight heads in height, more or less, uh, this one over here anyway, <clears throat> sort of a Asian looking face profile as it came out and uh, well she looks like a female the thing that I was trying to focus on because sometimes I'm just out and about and you know could be out for lunch or having a beer at the pub and the uh, uh, of course everybody knows one of the quintessential features of the female body is the hips the girls have uh, unbelievably high hip bones they come up very high and the uh, the fat on a girl's body whereas for guys it, it tends to fat tends to develop in the in the gut and some other areas girls uh, tend to develop more fat in the in the butt leg and hip area which makes their uh, bodies look more voluptuous and in uh, the breasts as well too it's almost like uh, evolution designed them to get fat in a sexy way <laughs> but uh, yeah so what I was trying to focus on with that was really to bring out the uh, the sexuality from the the hip area and to try and capture that uh, that vase shape that um, girls are famous for vase or vase depending on you know where you come from and so the the vase shape here that you know would go like this it's a good way to start to think about how to draw a girl um, and partially it happened I think I was looking at a photograph of a girl you know it's not always just what I saw in reality but um, this one girl she had something about her it was very particular how uh, like let's say the base of her legs started off like a, a, a little bit fatter and, and went down to uh, skinnier towards the feet and I started to notice this is also a part of the the whole thing and you have girls that wear high heel shoes that clearly come to a tip and so it's almost as if the female body wants to have these uh, fat meaty parts that come down to little skinny parts like that and uh, also with with the hips going up to the waist here and uh, I, I think it was sometimes I read things from other artists and I, I read a lot of books and stuff like that and I try to make sense out of where things should be with the shoulders and the width and, and the height and all this stuff. Um, so I could be wrong, but it's usually uh, written knowledge that a lot of artists seem to, in, in their study of the female anatomy, they'll often say that the shoulders should not be as broad. But I don't know if that's true. When I look around in reality, I don't see as much of that, realistically speaking. Um, the proportions of the the shoulders, the, the length, <clears throat> when I look at people in reality, seems to be just like this girl here. I mean, she has quite broad shoulders, maybe just not as meaty. Um, I'm not sure if it's a genetic fact. Though we'd have to look that up, I, I guess, somehow in anatomy reference, like real human anatomy. But even if it's true, I, I'm not sensing it to the extent that I've seen written in, in some books. I think girls can have equally as broad shoulders um, and I guess there are cases where obviously men just you know because they're muscular attributes they tend to uh, to end up being they, they'll have bigger chests and shoulders so you know this was like a, a guy who worked out real strong his, his arms might come out to here and they would have to be like that because he would have uh, a lot more meat to him <clears throat> but not every guy is like that either a lot of guys are very skinny and so in cases where they're skinny, they might have broader shoulders to allow for more muscle, but it doesn't necessarily mean they have that muscle, in which case they're, they're, the width of their shoulders would seem equally uh, skinny. So you see with this rough sketch I just made right here, um, this is, uh, you know, it, it didn't take long at all. I wasn't really focusing on anything. And it looks like a girl. You can just tell. And it's kind of like I was imagining, you know, from behind such as with, uh, with this one over here. This one still is a bit manly. I didn't get um, that roundness out. So what I was trying to do is, uh, the whole point of this is not that, I mean, we a lot of us know 
all this stuff already, but to find a easier way to whip it up in, uh, in drawing, so to speak. So to break it down into shapes, things like that. So what I'll do here is, well, I can keep this one here. Just add another layer. And don't need a name for it right now, but we'll put it up here so I can be organized. And I'll just uh, redo that for you real quick, what I did there. And uh, I'm going to take a guess. You get better after a while guessing how how big the head should be. And it's always nice to have that overall shape. Um, so I'll go through all the, the steps here of doing a regular body as, as I normally do. Um, you know, if you're sketching on real paper, maybe you don't want to draw these lines. But I, I want to get a sense of where the center of the body is, because that should be the bending point. They have some argument between uh, Michelangelo and, uh, was it Donatello or Da Vinci, about the precise, correct bending point of the body. And of course, we have to remind ourselves that um, they're, well, they're all wrong. <laughs> they, you know, a lot of people forget that they're like, first of all, those guys are like 500 years old, dead. And you should use the most modern knowledge. And also, you have to keep your mind incredibly open <clears throat> when you do these things because not everyone's the same. And it could, you know, be nationality, it could be height, this and that. And so, what are the chances that uh, the Renaissance artists included, like, let's say, uh, uh, Asian people or, uh, you know, African people, um, Hispanic people into their. Well, that, I mean, I don't even know. They have Hispanic back then. Was is that what they would call it? There would be Spanish people, but isn't Hispanic uh, relevant to uh, South America? And uh, I mean, I I, just, I don't know. They, they, apparently, all the Europeans migrated over and made you know the the major population of that area. Of course, they had the uh, what they call the Native Americans and stuff. But uh, apparently, we. Uh, you know, we populated the Americas now, so I don't even know if they would have Hispanic people back then. Maybe they didn't even have Hispanics, according to, I mean, I'm just making this up as I go along. Uh, yeah, I mean, some, someone will say I'm a racist for uh, for not knowing that. Great, that's awesome. Um, so got to rise above it in order to learn some things sometimes. So with this... Now you have a standard frame right there, right? It's, it's just where the shoulders and everything should be. That's standard. So what I'm going to do is going to make a, a really, starting with that, that center point of the body, where the body should bend, I'm just going to make an extremely exaggerated circle. Because I keep, you know, wanting to draw the girls and not really getting that uh, sexuality of the hips, as I said. So that's an important part. I don't really want to have to think about things like that. And notice I'm just going to really just blow this up. I'm going to you know, blow her hips out as far as I possibly can here and then try to squeeze them back into reality. So she's going to look like a stretched out girl at first. It's the same thing I did with a previous example. And you know, I don't have to follow that egg shape exactly. So it almost looks like right now like her legs are blown up, right? But it's a good place to start. I'm going to do that and have these sink back in. And then I'm just going to start to erase and see what is going to be slightly more realistic. And remember where our hips should be. This is all very loose, of course. So I'm just show that her legs still look like legs and all that stuff. And it's even possible that her body should be a bit more broad. You do have to remember there should be the rib cage in there, and uh, you know with lungs and heart in the middle and all that stuff. So, kind of comes out like that. And flip that around a bit. I feel like I'm losing my symmetry. If you're on paper, I, I would normally like flip the paper upside down. I have, uh, I probably have an undiagnosed condition. I'm definitely losing. Uh, vision in one of my eyes, a little bit older. I've uh, I just noticed it. If I squint one eye, I'm getting slightly blurred vision, and it could even be some kind of damage was done. Uh, you know, I I'm not really athletic, but I get out a lot and I do a lot of things. 
You never know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, driving too fast or with the uh, windows down and something strikes you in the eye. There's a million and one things that could happen if you're an outdoorsy kind of person. So there's that, and you can tell that we're definitely female-esque, but it's not incredibly, you know, sexy. So I want to... But, I mean, it's not even... That is incredibly... Not incredibly sexy, but it's not very uh, realistic. Something going on there. So we do have to do the uh, the breasts as well. And when, we, when we're doing that, keep in mind, again, the rib cage. And this, I mean, I'm not... They have so many books and tutorials and stuff like how to draw breasts and one of the key things to keep in mind is that uh, something I, I did find interesting and useful is that if you look at where the the throat comes down and right here you'll have the uh, the collarbones and the collarbones meet in this area right right there that's good to keep in mind when you're drawing people so if I were to do you know you can have collarbone here in the front and then comes direct straight down the throat and you get a feeling for where that spot is right there might be uh, I'm not sure if that's the trachea but uh, whatever that that part is and we go there you should um, sort of triangle out like, like this to see where the uh, the tips of the breasts are and that's where the uh, you know well we call the the nipples I guess is what they'd be called um, for lack of a more scientific word at the moment um, so and and then they should kind of fall out in that direction because they don't just droop down like you know, uh, what is it water balloons. <laughs> there, there's this outward. They sort of fall outward because the gravity is going to be pulling them out around the uh, the curved nature of the body, which has rib cages and stuff. And so, oh, they just go in that direction too. It might just be the actual way that the the breasts are uh, developed, uh, physically speaking, that causes that to happen. So now I looked at all the mistakes. I, I mean, the circle was helpful and. And stuff, but I'm just going to bring the legs up to where I think they belong. Um, it's okay for the hips to come out like that, and the hip bones are very high, but it uh, doesn't have to be so awkward. I just shape it out a little bit, and remember that there's hips in there. This is very, very sketchy. I would normally, well, I would hope to do a little bit faster than that, but it, I mean, it's come along okay. Now, uh, we still have to see uh, the hips are up here, that's okay. And then uh, her body has its grounding down here. It comes down to that. And uh, But even with the hips up higher, which make the legs seem longer, if I were to make a line here and a line here, the knees should be about halfway. My trick for remembering the knees is that let's you know imagine if she was sideways, then her here the leg is this long. So it should, you know, if she were to bend her knee out sideways, it should be about that long. And when it comes all the way up, if she were to bring her heel all the way up here to her butt, um, I mean, you can try this yourself. If you pull your heel up as far as you can, it should touch your butt around that area. And so that's that's how you'll know instantly. If Let's say if I made the knee down here, well, then you can feel it's only this long. And if I were to bend that, then, you know, then her heel would only touch like half up her leg. And that's obviously not long enough. The people's legs tend to bend like uh, just in half so that the, the heel can touch the butt. There's a, kind of a cheap, easy way, cheap trick to keep in mind. A little test you can do to see if your knees are hitting the right spot. And you do need to use your imagination for that and just kind of eyeball it. Um, you could also like bring out a ruler if you wanted to. Now remember that uh, as I'm coming down drawing the legs here, we we were uh, well. I was, uh, you know, working on this theory that there's something uh, more feminine. You know, the sexuality uh, approach to this is if the legs are like meaty up top and then come down to sharp points. And I'm still maintaining that as being true. So you, you don't normally see girls with big calf muscles as being uh, an attractive feature. And as a matter of fact, uh, I think a lot of us know that when girls go to exercise, for example. They're trying to uh, do the type of exercise that did not increase their muscle tone. They still want to look feminine is why they do that. They don't want to have big brutish uh, you know, biceps and big meaty calf muscles and, and all that stuff. So 
Um, but it's normal to have a very strong legs on the, the upper legs, you know, the inner thigh to outer thigh area there could be strong and meaty, and that still maintains uh, femininity to it. So it's okay for that. But then as we come down towards the uh, more bony parts here, the bone and tendon of the legs, then uh, it would be okay to let it thin out so it doesn't look like there's so much muscle in there. And I can't say why. I mean, I'm a guy myself. I, I can't necessarily say why this uh, looks more attractive. And I also, you know, there's a lot of things outside of everything that I've been saying thus far. I can't really prove some of it, but I know that it seems more appealing uh, to me, and uh, based on everything I've said, it's also, it also seems to be rather uh, common knowledge, common sense kind of thing we don't need to argue about. And uh, if anybody were to argue that, I've also already provided, uh, you know, all these examples of like why girls go to the gym and, and all of that stuff, uh, how they do different exercises, and so you should be able to tell that's that's just how it is. I can clearly see here that there's a bit. She looks a bit bloated. I'll just try and work on that. Make her a bit more skinny up here, which is okay. It's a very boring posture. She's just standing straight. Um, as we know, uh, this with the hands that, that come down, so that she should be able to touch her own crotch. Same with men. But with girls now, what I've noticed, uh, is because their hips are wider and when their hands come down, there's a much stronger tendency for the hands to be directly touching uh, her own hips like this. Whereas with men, because of all the muscle <coughs> and their waists are more skinny, then uh, their hands might be just uh, not resting on their hips. It would be like, you know, st standing out the side. So it's almost like, you know, he looks real buff and his arms are like popped out to the side and his hands are like just claws that are, you know, dangling in the air. Kind of a macho look. Okay. So now, uh, I hate to, in video and stuff like this, draw genitalia. Uh, just like I had to even erase the nipples there. You know, I hope we're all being mature here. But if I don't do that, I really feel like I can't find my ground. I, I need to know that's there before I draw anything like pants and then judge out where would the belly button be. And to do that, even though girls don't all have six packs or it's, maybe it's a less common phenomenon, um, it, it would still be good to feel out where is all that space there just so I know. Because if I see all that, and I'm, I'm going to erase it anyway, but when I see all of that muscle and where the belly button might be, which I think should actually be here, then I have a more uh, sound feeling that I'm doing the right thing here. Her breasts are actually, uh, even though it looks normal for an illustration, they would be considered incredibly large <coughs> uh, like that. Let's try and turn them down a little bit. <coughs> and see out here how, um, see, that, that's another like cheap trick. Just have them come out like this. Again, they're not water balloons, but have this kind of uh, this swoop here, which goes up to about where uh, the nipples, which I you know don't want to show so prominently, would uh, would come out there. So there's a swoop here, and then you can imagine that this bottom part here is like where uh, again they're not water balloons, but that that's where the the gravity pulls a lot of the tissue of the breast uh, down, and the the top part. It's like holding the, the strength, and so it's kind of like a, a mountainous avalanche kind of effect where where everything is like falling down this way, and then it falls into more of like falling into a, a sack and not so much like a water balloon where the stress is all held up. But even with water balloon, it would uh, probably make the same effect if you were to fill it uh, in a certain way and, and, you know, lean it against a certain type of body. But I don't think it would have this... this this kind of ridge here. It's hard to describe that. It's a concave uh, phenomenon. There's a certain type of concave phenomenon that goes on there. So I want her body here around the elbows. Sorry, not elbows, the, the shoulders, but the there should be a crease just where the arms meet the side of the body, and that's not working out so well <clears throat> because of uh, 
you know, the breasts are in a way, and it looks like there's a gap in there, which should not be true. So probably the side of her body should be a little bit bigger, as if the, the ribs are a bit more like this, and that would look a bit more natural, something like that. So she still looks female, human. And I'll draw that area I was talking about earlier. I don't have the vocabulary for it. <clears throat> There's a little bump here. This is collarbone. Collarbone, I know. And then uh, where the collarbone meets, there's like two bumps there. And I just know what they look like and where they are. You can feel it on yourself. That's another thing about drawing people. They sit around and argue and stuff. It's like, uh, do you have a mirror? <laughs> do you have a body? Uh, just feel around. It's there. I'm telling you. You got one. Here you got the... And a girl, you don't want to promote the Adam's apple so much, but it happens. And I disagree. I know a girl used to wear a scarf all the time. She had a pretty prominent Adam's apple. She was a bit boyish, actually. But I thought she was beautiful. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I don't go around judging girls by their throats. <laughs> My, what a beautiful neck you have. Um, it's it's so lacking in Adam's apple. Nah, there's a lot, a lot of pretty girls out there that have Adam's apples. So if you're a girl. Don't be self-conscious uh, self conscious about your Adam's apple, if you have one. This hand might have come a bit too far. I don't know. Should go about there. I'm just nitpicking at this point. But something like that. I was mostly worried about getting, you know, that I was focusing on, on this hip area here. I just wanted to show how that exaggerating a giant circle like that and then slowly bring it down gives you a, a bit more realistic uh, hip region and also paying attention to uh, you know the way that that the the thickness seems to taper off uh, as we go down here towards the the feet so you see from here to here it's a lot thicker it slowly gets it goes back out a little bit you're gonna have a little bit of muscle tone in there but then you know get skinnier thinner and thinner as we go down and that's about that. I feel okay with that. I think it looks okay. And it, I mean, it took me a long time to do that, but the point, that's the whole point with sketching like this sometimes, taking taking your time and thinking out all of those details. So later, if you go to do something like, well, you probably notice sometimes when I draw cartoons and stuff, it pops out a lot quicker because, uh, you know, I have all these ideas. So if I were to just draw, you know, another girl real quick without worrying about being so realistic right now, I could you know, do something like like this and I wanted to do something with a pose actually just just a quick quick sketch try and do it as fast as possible but she has no pose here whatsoever I exaggerated way too much and you can tell it's already, you can just tell it's female, right? Arms a bit long there. And, yeah. Didn't have anything, didn't have any great inspiration there, so it came out all wobbly. But you get the idea is that with so few lines here, so few lines and, you know, rushing it, it's clearly female. And yeah. uh, my, my tablet is starting to squeak a little bit here. So, no. Maybe put a couple of breasts on there to finish it off. Something like that. And you can tell right away that you know, hips should be a bit higher, this and that. But that circle in the middle and the focus on the from fat to skinny, now, I don't mean like fat, but you know, from thick to thin with the legs like this and it just instantly brings out that, that female form and then you know as I did here you slowly work upon it and you know it's what if there's so many other things to consider so if she were like sitting down uh, I don't know maybe her her legs up like this some kind of warrior position let's see if we use the same technique so I'm gonna put a lot of strength around here I'm going to imagine that shoulders are this way, twisted a little. 
bodies coming out like this. And uh, here is her. Oh, just lost the ability to draw from right there. Yeah. So she has some kind of a spear in her hand right there. And she's looking arrogant. Like this, and her hair will come down. Okay, so I just draw this out real quick. Let's see what happens. So I have my my big circle down here, and notice how I drew the big circle kind of first because that tells me. I mean, for a girl, the center of her weight, and I mean this is true for everyone too. Uh, that the center of your body, like for example, if you watch some of these science shows now and they break down why people fell and you know they're doing skateboarding or you know, I can't remember the name of this show but it, it just shows you all these stupid things that people do and the science of stupid that was the name of it yeah so so I never know this video could be some people who watch aren't even like American <clears throat> and so and not everybody watches TV and stuff but the point is with the show they show you where the center of the body is and and you know why people fell did something really stupid so I want her leg to be like it's coming forward a little bit and so this one should be about here yeah. and then right yeah so this see why that circle is important her hip should be coming out on both sides here like that put her belly button there again I need to represent something for the genitalia just a little something. I'm going to come down skinny with the legs. Actually, for here, it's probably just shin bone. And then have her foot coming out there. Although there's something wrong with it. If her knee is here and her leg's out like that, I think this knee should also come out a little bit. Probably like that. Yeah. The knee also needs to pop out. Or was she kind of up on the knee? Uh, it's hard to say. Because I didn't draw the other leg yet. Let's say, hmm. Yeah, I didn't think about that. She could be like this with her leg, you know, with her foot back there, like that. Yeah. I think that out more carefully. Which means, still, we want the leg to get from as skinny to fat there. Anyway, you get the general idea. And I'm probably not going to finish drawing this, this whole thing right now. Again, with the arms, it's the same thing that uh, they we just want them to get a bit skinnier as they go down. Now, since obviously this is some kind of girl, you know, in a brutish kind of form, I could add some muscle tone because she's kind of like I don't know a, a Shira kind of uh, what did you call? Not cave woman, but like wild woman, wild. Uh, you know, like in a comic book. I think, is She-Ra a comic? That's why they call it She-Ra. <clears throat> Have her hand, like, around here. It's too big. And the hands would normally be smaller for a girl. So everything gets skinnier as it goes away from... It, it's almost like saying the the center of a girl, is a center. her center of gravity is more all around these uh, the hip area. And then it slowly... Uh, this uh, spear to go all the way down, and then it slowly goes. <clears throat> uh, it, it slowly tapers off. Everything, everything just seems to get skinnier as it gets further away from the uh, from the hips. So apparently, this video will be very long. I'll just keep drawing. Okay. So you get the general idea there. I definitely need to. Uh, I would need to stop and think. I, uh, you know, sometimes with perspective. I have, uh, especially with anatomy, I gotta stop and uh, do a little trial and error to see where that leg should be. <clears throat> Let me flip it real quick and see. That's not too bad. I mean, it's coming along. This one should be there. That one should be there. And the leg should have more roundness, like that. Right. So obviously, it's it's a little wobbly. A little. Try this with the leg. I do still struggle a bit with uh, part of the problem is just that the tablet itself is uh, a bit of a pain. I'm not drawing where I can see, so I have to 
you know, just throw things down. I can see the cursor. So if you were to get one of those tablets that has a screen on it and draw, it might be a little bit better. Arm, obviously, way too long here. But since she's bending at the elbow, but her hip is also, I mean, her whole body is kind of contorted a little bit. It should be okay. <clears throat> right, yeah, that's not as bad. So I just want to get something like that done, and then I'm gonna, I'm planning to like add some hair before I call it a day with this. And some eyes in here. And I do like that kind of mean look. Yeah. Could be like that, yeah. And so she's like uh still trying to think of the perfect name for it, like a wild woman. Out in a maybe out in a prairie. Her hair is like this, covering up her face a bit. I have a, a character I was working on, the character design. Her name was, um, actually I forget what her name was. It was something like that, like Shira or that kind of thing. There was one Shalakala, Princess Shalakala, I was working on, but she was more of a, a futuristic kind of kind of girl. So, that was not so long ago. I designed that other girl. I already forgot her name. But she was supposed to be sort of a a woman that would ride on a, a cat and somewhat futuristic but also uh with a, a savage kind of appeal to her. So she might have a spear or something like that. I like that kind of stuff. Not just for girls, but in general. I like uh, like the Conan Conan esque kind of drawings. Uh, brings you back to the good old times when you know we go hunting with our spears and fight against monsters. It's a lot of fun. It's just kind of traditional, I guess. I grew up with that stuff. You'd have your werewolves, your UFOs, and then there was like you know primitive man versus some giant monsters, such as like a Tyrannosaurus Rex or something. The whole savage wild fun of it. So I do want to put some uh, some something on her, some clothes. Maybe it's sort of like a, I don't want to say mini skirt, but like a wild, you know, kind of, uh, what would you call it? Like a, a, a little dress, like a leather, you know, dress as if she, you know, killed some animal and skinned it and made a, made a sort of a dress out of it. And then same thing with the... Uh, some garment, some cloth or loin, uh, loin cloth. What is loin cloth? Pick this vocabulary up sometimes. Just don't even know what it means. It's kind of like you know words first, and then you got to figure out what they mean. Yeah. So I'm very sketchy, scratchy when I start off like that. But uh, look at how fast that. I mean, you know, comparatively. A lot of people spend a lot of time drawing. And I know some people they draw like they'll just draw perfect lines and then go like this and, and everything just comes out perfect. Well, I'm not like that. I have to sketch and move things around a lot. But that's what pencils and erasers are for, right? You know, make some mistakes. And I like how it comes out like that. And you can continue to erase and sharpen it and then you know what I do next, right? If you look at my other videos, then after this I would uh you know make a new layer, I would turn this down make a new layer and start uh, you know, sharpening that up. And so the finished product is still good. It's all part of a professional process as far as I'm concerned. Um, so with this video, if you like these kind of videos, um, I know a lot of people, that this, is, this channel is relatively, well, it's small. I've had it for a couple of years, but it's just very s slow growth, but it is growing. Uh, so if you like this video, do uh, go ahead and look at the other ones. So I have a lot. This is like 70 something video I've made and so there's going to be a lot more to come and there's a lot of other ones you can already go look at. And then you have like, uh, you know, if you want to see new videos in the future, um, when they come out you can subscribe and uh, have notifications set on. I'm trying to, uh, you know, release things. Sometimes I'm up very late and I'll 
release videos at uh, you know odd hours, and so nobody wants to get a notification at um, you know 3 a.m. or something like that. I can understand that, uh, but so I'm trying not to do that anymore. What I, excuse me, what I do now is uh, I release at more normal hours. But there's also a lot of people who live in different time zones and stuff, so I can't do anything perfectly. I don't know. It, they don't have a setting on YouTube to release the video at you know different time zones for different people, at least not as far as I know. So this could I could continue to work on this all day. So I'm I'm just going to stop. There's like ankles and you know all this stuff that needs to be done. Make it all those little details are very important. It's what separates uh, you know a cool looking drawing from a more cartoony, childish looking one. But uh, yeah, just don't want to have to bore you with all those details here. That was a the premise was about the, you know, how to get a decent looking female drawn out using those a uh, couple of simple, a uh, simple, simple tricks, sorry. And so, yeah, uh, you can also look at the other videos I have if you're new, or uh, like and subscribe and all that other stuff. And if you have any questions, let me know. See you later, and have a good day.